Welcome back to my 91 Camaro. This is Mac and I am in my garage trying to figure out why my car is not charging anymore. So some things we're going to do is we're going to test how much um, voltage is coming from the alternator if any when the car is running and how much voltage is um, in the battery right now as it's sitting. I have had a charger on it uh, for a while now so we'll uh, see what uh, what this thing is doing. It almost looks like this thing is separated right here. Well, maybe it's supposed to be like that. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get a, uh, a multimeter on here and find out what the battery says and then uh, we will Turn the car on and see if there's any power coming to the battery. Okay, so this little multimeter I bought from Lowe's, I think a while back. Um, let's go ahead and see what this thing is coming up with. Thirteen oh four. Um, that's because I've had a charger on it, and we should have way more than that when the car is running. So let's go ahead and start her up and see what happens. So it's definitely not showing on the battery charging. So we are seeing that uh, on the power feed from the alternator, it is the same as the battery. So there's definitely something wrong with the uh, alternator. So we'll have to take this off. All right, so next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and remove the alternator and we'll have a, I have a little breaker bar to do um, a little tensioner here. So go ahead and start with that. So no need for a fancy tool or anything, but they have this little slot here. You just put in whatever um, breaker bar or extension you have for that and turn it, releases it, makes it super easy. Okay, so there are two 13 millimeter bolts holding this thing on. And then there's one 10 millimeter nut holding the power on. And then there's a little uh, clip on here for electronics inside the car. So we will start with uh, electrical connection. Um, also, uh, something you need to do before doing any of this stuff with alternator is you do need to remove the negative battery terminal before doing any of this stuff. And that's all it takes to get uh, your alternator out is these two bolts that come out. One's threaded at the top. One is just a pass through. And there's one clip in the back for your electronics inside the car. So we'll go ahead and get this tested. From AutoZone and see if 
there's something wrong with this or how I have it all wired, which I think it's all tuner, to be honest. But there's no telling. And if you guys want to get a close up of what bracket looks like, kind of see in there. We just had this one wire, this little clip plugged into it, and then there's these two bolts. So it's actually fairly simple on how it all goes together. Bolt slides through here, screws on this other side, goes in the middle of this, and then that's the other mounting point. Right through here. All right, let's go to AutoZone. That's all it's there. Wow, well, was um, we'll see what they say. Getting ready to test all tuner, it's all hooked up. Six, six, seven. That's going to tell us the lead number. And five. Close for the picture for everyone. Mm -hmm. This seems like a pretty universal plug for a GM anyway. Yep. I'm going to have to find a different place to mount this. You're the O'Reilly commercial in the background? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> At AutoZone, listen to an O'Reilly's commercial. Fail, 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 fail. Well, that answers that question. Okay, now we're going to test the new alternator. See how it Nice. So AutoZone hooked it up again. Got a good alternator. Cost me around 90 bucks off the door. Um, I'm okay with spending that. I know in Rock Auto has a lot of cheaper ones. This is a brand new alternator though. So I don't mind spending extra money for it. And I have a lifetime warranty on the alternator. So, okay, I'm heading back home, install it. Okay, got the alternator back from AutoZone. You know, I've been to a lot of parts stores and you always feel like you get that one guy that um, has no idea what kind of car you have or what parts you need. They rely on that system too long. The one I go to actually has some pretty knowledgeable people so it makes a pretty nice little um, trip every time I go there. Especially since this motor that I have in this car is not out of this car, it is out of a truck. So I can just kind of tell them what truck it came out of and uh, they know about Chevys and stuff so I don't have to worry about uh, explaining to them that this is a motor swap. Anyway, let's go ahead and first start by plugging this thing in and then shimming it into this little hole. There's a tight little fit right here. Okay, so we just gotta put those two bolts in there. You do not want to tighten this all the way down yet until you get this thing all lined up.
are, do not forget to put on the car wire. I like I got a new one. That should be good. So the last thing we have to do is put the ground back on. It is now time to start it and see if this thing uh, gets more power. And this concludes the changing of my alternator video and troubleshooting um, low voltage. And in turn, it fixed my, my speedometer. So kind of good uh, thing to replace that. Looks really nice and new. Um, a very simple job. Remove two bolts that mount it to the, the unit itself. Here they are here. One right here, one right here. Take off the fan belt by adjusting um, this, the tensioner. And then unhooking this 10 millimeter nut, take the power cable off, rinse and repeat. Obviously this is a little simpler than a minivan or a four cylinder that have it hidden by the well, well, you know, take the tire off for it, but uh, it's actually a fairly simple job. Anyway, if you like and uh, if you like this video, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any comments about how I did this, 
or if you have any ideas on how to fix my tachometer or do you think I should just go with a, a Dakota digital gauge let me know